Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the marketplace. Coming up this afternoon, poultry farmers adopt climate smart mitigation method to keep businesses afloat. Also, coming up, businesses urge to look beyond government's 600 million stimulus package. We hear from the National Board for Small Scale Industries. And also, in some tech news, TikTok threatens legal action against U.S. following an executive order banning the app. Details plus many more coming up this afternoon on your marketplace. Welcome back to the marketplace. And as telecoms providers uh, prefer solutions to the pandemic, CEO of Solution Class, Francisca Branda Ofosu, Opoku, impressed on businesses not to all in um, to look beyond the stimulus package that has been provided by government. Let's take a listen to that. So we started looking at what relevant packages we could put available to them, internet bundles, even um, SMS bundles. For enterprises, it was important that they could communicate with their base, you know, and even see the ability to call their close users um, within the offices. What about their meetings? I mean, people never thought about security at home and their staff relocating to the homes. And so we had to come in and provide <clears throat> secure services where people could comfortably work um, from home. Conference facilities, cloud services, we're hosting a number of solutions for, for our, our small enterprises and, and was very timely. I think the second one for me, <clears throat> sorry, the second one for me was, yes, now that the person is home and he has some of the tools that he can use and we've also driven affordability, how do, you, how do you drive him towards digital experience? People have been very unsettled in this process. You know, he has no idea how he's going to continue his business, how he's going to compete. The, the competition is changing and introducing technology. And so we started having this discussion on sharing our experiences. All right, so that was CEO of Vodafone Ghana, Patricia Obotnai, and speaking at a webinar to prefer solutions to the pandemic and how businesses can take advantage of all the offers and the stimulus packages that are being granted them. We'll have more discussion on that after this break. <music> Welcome back to the Marketplace. I am Sandra Essenam Apeno, Director of the National Board for Small Scale Industry, Koshi Yankee, says the amount government is injecting to revive Ghana's COVID-19 ridden business community is unprecedented. Taking her turn at the Business Runway Webinar Series organized by the Enterprise Unit of Vodafone Ghana, Koshi Yankee argued that contributions by government to the private sector far exceed the 600 million stimulus package that has been given. My colleague Charles Aite was at that webinar and he joins me in studio for more. Thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. What was the purpose, Charles, for this webinar? You know, over the past few months, we have seen businesses hit hard by COVID-19. Despite the various regulations that government has come up with to ensure that they are cushioned from the effects private sector has also come in to support. So Vodafone in its own way, aside the various interventions that they've rolled out to support businesses, came up with a business runway webinar. We saw thousands of businesses connect online to interact with business leads on the best ways by which they could survive mm. in these times of COVID-19. And so what are some of the best ways that they were told or suggestions that was given to them to be able to stay afloat in this COVID time? Mm. So as you rightly stated there, the director for the National Board for Small Scale Industries, Kosi Yankee, stated that yes, there is a package, the stimulus, the 600 million stimulus package for businesses to establish themselves. But these businesses would have to go a notch higher to not just recover themselves from the pandemic, but come up with solutions among themselves to survive in these angles. Because mind you, the global economy is still working. Businesses are still working across the world. So how do you emerge in the face of competition? Mm. And that was the phase of the discussion this morning. I was, I'm particularly interested in as to whether they give them clear-cut directions or uh, ways by which they can revive their businesses because yes uh, COVID government has uh, supported them with some stimulus packages but again beyond what government has given have they been told what else they can do on their own mm. for instance uh, a lady who represented businesses she's the chief executive of solution class mm. Francesca Brendo Poku says business would have to be very much innovative 
in this particular time. They would have to be very much innovative. They'd have to come up with tailor-made solutions for COVID-19. So uh -huh. if you're a seamstress and you're sewing something, how best can your attire fit mm. the demands that have come because nowadays people will have to wear their face masks and uh, adhere to social so get innovative protocols. right Exa exactly okay. and not just getting innovative but also having convincing business you know solutions to society in order for them to access credit because now we've heard from the banking association the bankers association they are saying that they are eager to invest in bankable investment, mm. bank, bank, bankable ventures, you know, within the entrepreneurial space. So all these things are part because, yes, we are struggling. Yes, you need the funds. But what are the indicators that if we give you this loan, it's going to generate more income? All for right. Us? So this was put together by the enterprise unit of Vodafone. I know more businesses are relying on the Internet now and telephone, uh, telecommunication service providers are cashing in at this point. What has Vodafone been saying about this whole webinar and how businesses can take advantage of the internet? Well, so first of all, uh, the chief executive, Patricia Obunai, explained that they have slashed specific you know, charges on transfer of mobile money, especially when most businesses are going online and transferring their salaries via mobile money transfers. They've also tightened security, not just with Vodafone, but with other telecom operators as well. It intensifies security to ensure that those who operate within the online value chain are not, you know, pinched by online fraudsters. Mm. And also the tailor-made solutions for SMEs, techpreneurs, to come up with the brighter solutions to aid in the fight against COVID-19. I'm sure businesses are learning. They, they took some cues from the exercise this morning. Charles Isaac, thanks so much for joining me on the marketplace. Away from that, the National Insurance Commission, NIC, says it will not relent on its quest to clamp down uninsured commercial properties in the country. Even though the commission began the exercise somewhere last year, it was met with concerns from a section of the public that it had no legal right to do so. But speaking to Joy Business, Deputy Commissioner of Insurance, Michael Andor, says the power to sanction owners of the said properties it's enshrined in the insurance law. We, we are on, you know, some of the things that we've been doing to enforce it. We haven't stopped. We are still doing it. Unfortunately, some of you journalists thought that we did not have the power to do what we were doing. But the powers are there in the Insurance Act. And I don't know whether you haven't read them. So we are continuing to, to enforce it as long as the, the law empowers us to enforce it, to make sure that. And at the end of the day, you see, it is to protect us. If you enter any building and anything happens to you, you're, 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 you, you may be injured, you, you, you may be maimed. And if it is the fault of the owner or the occupier of that building, it will be the person's responsibility to take care of you. What if that person is not liquid at that point in time? What if they don't have the kind of money you need to take care of yourself? So this thing we are talking about is for our own good. But sometimes we make it seem as if somebody wants to uh, uh, capitalize on, on. But it is, it is just to protect us. Every compulsory insurance has in mind the protection of the ordinary Ghanaian. Motor insurance is compulsory because if you buy your vehicle and you are enjoying it on the road, and I haven't been fortunate to buy a car. You can't just break my leg and drive away because you have bought a vehicle. There must be a way for you to compensate me for, for, for breaking my leg with, with your vehicle. So every compulsory insurance is to protect an innocent third party. The Deputy Commissioner of Insurance, Michael Andor, spoke at the official launch of a total filling station and star assurance collaboration which seeks to provide commercial drivers who purchase their fuel from total with insurance. Meanwhile, Executive Director of Star Assurance, Bridget Opoku Sako, says the collaboration is part of efforts to boost insurance penetration. At Star Assurance, we are indeed very excited about the collaboration with Total Petroleum Ghana, which has resulted in the enhanced choice of Ghana package. Most importantly, about the two strong brands partnering to offer value added services and to reward the loyalty of our mutual clients. I would therefore encourage our clients and our insurance public to sign up to the Total Choxy Club and take advantage of the numerous benefits it presents to enhance their businesses. 
At Snowshorns, we believe in sharing the good things in life with our cherished customers. And as such, our partnership in the Total Shopsy Club is one of the many innovative products and rewarding offers we have in store for the insuring public. Mr. Deputy Komunishka, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to add that at Stanshorns, we are very mindful of the times and very much aware of the many challenges the global pandemic presents to us in Ghana. In our news this afternoon, Ghana's changing weather patterns characterized by erratic temperatures can be attributed to the global phenomenon of climate change. The negative impact of agriculture is not limited to crops but livestock and poultry as well. As a result, poultry farmers in the Kintampo North Municipality are adopting climate smart mitigation methods to reduce disease infection on their bed. Joy News' Mahmoud Mohamed Nureddin visited some farms and has come through with this report. At this farm here at Korawura Kura Farm Manager, Adam Kwana keeps 5,000 bears. Special things we are doing here is, aside the poultry, which is also common in Ghana, we have the, the geese, the turkeys, and the ostriches in the farm. The, the, the geese, there was a farm at Jairi, the old farm. The, stamp, the farm started at Jairi, but here is a new sector that we started here in 2006. And uh, the, the geese, they, they brought the old geese from that farm, so they are old. And we see that their offsprings are not all that good. While the sale of eggs and broilers provide regular income for funding recurrent expenditure, the slightest strike of any disease throws the work out of gear. Lack of climate resilient chicken breeze to reduce mortality remains a challenge. The weather varies at any point of time. You could see the weather daytime is getting cold whilst the sun is shining when you enter in the sh in the shed is cold sometimes that one is normal but sometimes when the weather is getting evening time the weather becomes so warm so sometimes the best doesn't support those uh, variety of uh, weather so the laying percentage also would depend on the weather also Adam says he has lost some bears to the weather. Yes, at the beginning, when we put those who are in the cages, when we put them, they were normally 444 four, four per uh, unit of cage. But when we put them for four, after one week, we realized that we, I recorded five mortalities daytime. And when I did the postmodium on them, there was no sign of sickness. So the conclusion was that because of the weather, which was hot, that was in the month of March. And the weather was so hot. So we decided to leave them three, three, three per unit of cage. He now plants trees on the farm to mitigate the situation. Yes, as I was saying, for the weather, what we are doing now is we are planting the trees now, mango trees around the shed, at least to minimize the heat around the, the area, the poultry site. Hundreds of acres of crop farming complement the poultry venture as a farm manager explores new system to protect the base. This year we were able to farm 40 acres of rice at uh, one farm and the other farm we farm 200 acres. And the maize we tried only to with the manure that we are collecting from the farm we tried with uh, 50 acres. And, and yeah. And then say a old Kofi Enchi already has trees around his poultry farm. The situation is changing for him. If you look behind me, you will see we have planted a lot of trees to protect the bears from trees. I started planting the trees immediately I established the poultry farm. Poultry as a source of livelihood and important food security element in Africa critically requires understanding how farmers deal with the realities of production due to climate change. A report by Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin. 
Let's do some tech news now. And U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday issued an executive order that would ban the social media app TikTok and WeChat from operating in the U.S. in 45 days if they are not sold by their Chinese-owned parent companies. President Trump earlier indicated a, cent a certain amount of money from the sale needs to be sent to the U.S. Treasury Department. Microsoft was pushing towards uh, with talks to acquire the app. And I have Kobe Spike here, our tech guru in-house here for more discussion. Thanks so much for your time this afternoon. How did we get here, the fight for TikTok, the fourth and back with the US? How did we get here? So, well, the background is all, there's been this trade war between USA and China. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's, it's difficult for the Chinese apps, one, because this thing, you don't allow U.S. apps in your country, but you want the U.S. to allow your apps in their country. Mm -hmm. So basically, for me, that's my opinion. If you guys, if China wants the U.S. to be more relaxed to them, they should also be more relaxed with everybody else. But then, I mean, the whole thing is stemmed on the fact that um, some people reverse engineered TikTok and they realized I was taking a whole lot of information. From the US? From users. Okay. So as a user, if you're using TikTok, there's a whole lot of information about you that the app is taking, mm. including even stuff on your clipboard. Now your clipboard is when you highlight something and you click copy. Mm. It stays on the clipboard. TikTok actually checks all those things. Spiky, so why are we not making noise in this part of our world if that's the reality? Well, people would still use it regardless. We've seen lots of apps which have been complained about that they are taking users' data, but people still use them. So in, ca in this case, Trump is justified, and it's, it's incumbent on our authorities or government also to protect users from this part of the world, right? Well, yes. If you, if you look at it from that angle, um, it's not been proven what the data is being used for. If it's actually been, quote, unquote, stolen. Mm. And if the data seems, uh, is proven to be used nefariously, then, yes, they have a, a case. I guess. I mean, at the end of the day, taking all that data is not, is not important for an app like TikTok. Right. But they're doing that. So based on this, the U.S. government, Donald Trump, has reason to say that, hey, TikTok is going to get banned because of this. And they're also asking that um, for TikTok to work in that space, it should be sold. Yeah, and, and Microsoft was actually yes, pushing so to buy it. Exactly. They've been given 45 days. If it's not sold, what's the future of TikTok in the U.S. and around so, the world? So Donald Trump is saying that he's going to use an executive order mm. to ban the use of TikTok in the country. You know some money has been allocated for users, created of content, yes. for instance, in the U.S., 200 mm. million. Yeah. People are bored. COVID has rendered yeah. a lot of people jobless. So this executive order, how is it likely to impact on jobs and people who are already struggling as a result of COVID-19? Mm. So what, what could happen is that, well, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, he has sort of created, Instagram has created their own version of TikTok. They're calling it Reels. Mm. Now, if this, this ban does happen, it's going to cause people to move to the next available ship. Which wow. maybe either Instagram Reels or some other platform that can make Quite exciting. Money. We wait to see how that pans. Yeah. I am Sandra S. And I'm going to log on to MajoraLine.com for a slack business for more business news updates. Thanks so much for watching The Marketplace.